What do we mean by container supported development? To answer that, I want you to think about this question. Why should I use containers during development? What value do they even bring me? The goal of this learning path is to demonstrate and hopefully convince you that there are many ways containers can be used to increase developer productivity, even if your main app isn't containerized. Let's start off by looking at a sample application. Most apps are composed of many different services. This particular application, a catalog service, stores its data in a Postgres database, images and blob storage such as AWS S3, and then gets inventory data from an external inventory service. Additionally, it publishes update events into Kafka to allow other services to be notified of changes and then allow them to send customer notifications or whatever else they might want to do. So now how do we set up this development and testing environment? This leaves basically two options. Option one is to connect to shared staging infrastructure, such as in a dev environment. In this case, my dev instance can work with a real S3 bucket, a deployed remote inventory service and more. But unfortunately, this quickly doesn't scale once I start adding other developers to my team. This adds a lot of cost and complexity, especially if I am in an org that may even provision these resources per developer. Additionally, now these developers have to fight and there's conflicts that might occur over this shared infrastructure. Option two is to create a development environment in which a developer runs each of these dependent services locally on their machine. Fortunately with containers, this is pretty easy to do. So instead of deploying a remote cloud infrastructure and managing IAM policies and S3 buckets, I can just simply run a local S3 compatible service such as Mini or local stack. Instead of relying on the external inventory service directly, I can use an API mock such as Wire mock to then work against the API. I can also then run Kafka and Postgres locally as well. But the advantage is once I start using containers, it's also easy for me to add additional services without thinking about how do I configure, install, and set them up. And this allows me to then either publish or consume test messages into my Kafka cluster, or even visualize what's going on in my, in my database. This idea of using containers to help my development environment is what we call container supported development. And again, it doesn't matter if my main app is containerized or not. In this example, the main application could be running in a container, or it could be started just by opening up my project in VS Code or IntelliJ and pressing the play button, letting everything run natively. It simply doesn't matter. Then when a developer pushes their code, containers can then be used again during integration tests to spin up the required resources. Again, no shared infrastructure, no deployed infrastructure to manage, no conflicts to worry about, et cetera. The test containers framework also makes it really easy for me to integrate the life cycle of the containers with the life cycle of the tests as well. When the tests run, the containers spin up. When the tests are completed, the containers go away. That's it. So I hope you're starting to see the value of container supported development. Now, throughout the next couple of videos, we'll dive into specific use cases to demonstrate how they work and the value they provide. And we'll also talk about a couple of little extra nuggets along the way. Thanks for watching.